Hey guys, so um, I know that not a lot of people view my videos. I'm not getting a lot of exposure except maybe for a few trolls who have started leaving comments now. But um, I'm going to make this video anyway just so that it's out there regarding red flag laws and also my health. Um, I just want this out there. That's all. Uh, anyway, so we know that the perpetrators intentionally provoke the targets into a negative response in public. We know that, right? But, but, but you know, the, the question is why, right? And the reason is, well, there are two reasons, right? The first is that they want to get the targets, they want the target to discredit himself or herself, okay? They want the target to have a public outburst and then to, you know, to go around telling people, hey, look, this is what's happening to me. Why? Because when we complain about what's happening to us, we sound crazy. And it's very difficult to get proof when your, you know, covert warfare is being waged on you, okay? I think some people don't understand the definition of covert, unless it's just trolls, you know, who are just, I mean, we know trolls are leaving the comments, but covert warfare is hard to prove. Um, this happened, you know, in East Germany during, you know, during the communist regime, when, when communism took over East Germany, uh, you know, the East German police, the Stasi or Stasi, however you pronounce it, they waged psychological warfare on anyone who, who opposed the communist regime in East Germany. And that, that, that form of warfare was later termed Zersetzung, which means, I think, decomposition or total destruction of a person on every level, And it, because that's what it was meant to do, right? They, they followed people around. They, they used very illegal surveillance. They, they put, you know, they, they pin cameras in people's homes. They infiltrated the private lives of the targets and, and had even friends and family join in to track the targets. And, you know, they, they broke into the homes of, of the targets and they, they, would, they would move things around or, or leave a window open or, or do something where when the target complained, he, he would sound crazy, right? Or she would sound crazy. And then when the target complained and, and you know, was deemed crazy, the, he or she would be put in a mental hospital, right? They would... Uh, and a, a medical, di a psychological diagnosis would be given to the target, and the target would be be put in a mental institution. And even if a target wasn't, <clears throat> you know, even if a target was was left, you know, to roam free, he was never really free. Why? Because now he's discredited, right? Now he's got the, the label of mentally ill hovering over his head. And at that point, uh, mental illness was an accusation. It wasn't just a, a medical diagnosis because when a person was accused, and I, yes, I use that word intentionally, accused of mental illness, they would either be institutionalized or they would have many of their freedoms limited, right? Okay, they would be judged, you know, very hypocritically, okay? A very uh, hypocritical standard of judgment would be used against them. They would have their freedoms taken away when other people who were certainly far worse than they are or were would, would be able to roam free and even rule others, you know, rule have power to rule over others. So it was a very hypocritical standard of judgment. And I guess in every group, you're going to have some, you know, in every society, you're going to have some group that's targeted for, dis for destruction, you know, some group that the masses have to gather together against. And that group is going to suffer, unfortunately, right? And they're going to, you know, they have, they tend to have everything taken from them, even though the masses who are doing this to them are probably less mentally competent than the people they're targeting. Anyway, it's happening again, right? Um, we know that. Part of the reason that the, that, that the targets try to provoke to such an extent is because the goal, I think, the agenda, their agenda is to have the targets, you know, the perpetrators that want the targets to be deemed mentally unstable, or it's not even the perpetrators, some of them don't even know what they're doing, but whoever's running this, to be mentally unstable, and then discredited that way, right? Of course, another reason is that the organizers behind this want the targets to snap, maybe violently on the perpetrators, attack the perpetrators, and either get thrown in prison, or, or get killed by a cop, you know, who knows, right? And a lot of, you know, it, it, it's, it's terrifying, because if you look at, if you look at it this way, a lot of those mass shooters, they said that people were following them. They said that, uh, you know, people were making gestures and certain comments and that people can see them and hear them in their homes. Now, for some of them, it was it was impossible for um, like the media and for the law, law enforcement to avoid that information because it was out there. Right. The, the, the population already had that information because, you know, for someone like Myron May, he, he recorded it. He made a video and 
So what they tried to do instead of hiding what was happening to him was they, they tried to frame it as mental illness. Of course, this is the easy out now. This is the easy out. You don't like what someone does. You call them mentally ill. They're discredited. Okay. This is an easy out for people who are lying, slandering, defaming, who, who know that they're wrong, but have no proof. They can't, they can't, they have no valid facts to back up their claims. All they can do is start using the mental illness excuse and discredit the target that way. Okay. Others, though, others, you know, it's terrifying. You know, the, who, the, the mass shooters went crazy. If you look at some of the reports that have been hidden, they said people were following them. They said people were making gestures and, and, and people could see them in their home. Well, why do they think people can see them in their home? Because the idiot perpetrators are told to make comments or certain gestures that the target said or did in their home. And I'm guessing not all the perpetrators understand even the meaning of, of, of behind what they're told to say and do. Okay. Anyway, for, for some of the shooters, that was hidden. You know, that information was hidden. Why? Because if, if enough of this information is released to the public, then many of the individuals, the people who have gone along with these sick programs, will begin to wake up and realize that they helped create this. They're doing something bad. They're doing something wrong, right? They are the ones who are going around tracking people and following people and making certain comments and certain gestures. This is why, you know, at, at, the first thing the the law you know law, the government tries to do is hide that this is happening. The second thing they try to do if they can't hide it is is demonize the target as mentally ill. Okay, that's an easy out for them. Making matters worse, we have the red flag laws now, where the masses just can just report anyone. And of course, it's the targets who are breaking down. I mean, anyone who's put through this type of psychological warfare is going to start breaking down. So the targets look crazy, whereas the perpetrators who are psychopaths. Well, they're smiling. They look perfectly fine. They're not the ones breaking down because they're not the ones being put through hell. Right. To make matters worse, to make matters worse, you know, doctors and, and you know, medical staff can now, now actually I think they have to, report uh, the conditions of individuals to the government. And that includes mental illness. And when it comes to politics, both sides are doing this. Both sides. Both, the, both sides are, are, are adding to this, okay? So what's happening is, you know, you have people who go in and they're being not just bullied. To say, to say bullied is an understatement. I mean, consider stalking, you know, 50 years ago. You know, some guy might follow a girl home and, you know, and, 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 and mail her a note or leave a note on her doorstep that says he knows what she's doing or he knows where she is, right? Nowadays, they'll hack your computer, right? They'll hack a target's computer, They'll, they'll watch the target in real time and tell her what she's, she's doing and saying and even wearing in real time. It's terrifying. Now imagine she's afraid, she's frightened, she's terrified. She goes for help. And her anxiety, her, 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 her warranted fear is, is trivialized down to, to anxiety and a panic attack. She's not going to get help. Okay? Especially if she's already been traumatized. And that, that, that post-traumatic stress, right, disorder is PTSD, right, that trauma... It manifests, and instead of taking that seriously, she's, she's labeled with anxiety and maybe paranoia. Well, guess what now? Now all those stalkers can get away with what they're doing because when she goes for help, she's not going to be taken seriously. This is how dangerous this is, okay? And, I mean, the, the, this is insane, okay? You, it, I mean, the last thing you want is to go to a doctor and be diagnosed with paranoia because once that label is on there, that's it. You go for help, you're not taken seriously. You know, they, because the, these, this information is shared now. There's, you know, I mean, between the, the hospitals, the government, law enforcement, everything, the information is shared. So someone looks at your chart. You know, if you're being followed and you're being harassed and someone's attacking you, someone looks at your chart, they see paranoia, that's it for you. You're not going to get help, right? This is so dangerous. And this is what the government wants, okay? They're trying to isolate targets. And a lot of targets, I think, are, are whistleblowers. Some oppose the government, some, some are seen maybe as a threat to the current order, and some are chosen for other reasons. But this is how the, ruling, the rulers are using the masses in order to control and destroy targeted individuals. You look at the days of MKUltra, the, you know, the CIA got hundreds of hospitals and universities and, and, and businesses involved in it. That doesn't mean that everybody knew that they were involved in, in a hor something horrible, but many did know, and they went along with it anyway, right? You know, we're heading, we're heading toward a terrifying time, and I just heard, too, um, 
the Canadian government is now looking for role, surveillance role players, right? Well, now we know the U.S. has been doing this for a long time. They they hire these people, you know, and eventually they get these people. These people are not uh, go uh, helping, you know, uh, legitimate law enforcement track actual criminals. They're 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 playing these games with innocent targets. I think this is a game even to some of them. But they're targeting innocent people, or at least people who were once innocent. No one is going to stay innocent for very long after they're being, you know, for enough years of being targeted like this. Anyway, so I wanted to talk about my health just to get this out there. Um, for a few months now, and I know I've, I've explained to people that, uh, you know, I've been trying to get in shape. I've been trying to diet and lose weight um, because I wasn't feeling well. And what happened was I wasn't feeling well, and I started having dizzy spells. And um, just like I felt like dizzy and, and weak and, you know, a lot of things. And so I decided, all right, I need to get in shape. So I started I started dieting. Eventually, I went low carb. And um, the dizziness, the weakness, you know, all of the symptoms did not stop. And what was happening was I would feel dizzy. I would feel weak. My hands would tingle. My feet would tingle. Um, just my entire body, it felt like it would tingle. And I would get up and it would feel, it, it was almost like as if I was about to black out. And sometimes um, I would get up and uh, my heart would start racing really fast. It, it was like um, I'd be sitting down and my heart would be beating normally. Then I would get up and start walking around. And just from a little exertion, just a tiny amount, my heart would be racing. Okay. It, but it's getting worse. I thought like with diet and exercise and weight loss, it would get better. It, it's been getting worse. Um, two, like I'll have moments where uh, my heart will be beating really fast and then there'll be a pause. And then I'll start beating really fast again and then a pause. So anyway, I, 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 I um, blogged about, the, or, you know, I, I told you guys about the time where um, I actually went to the hospital because it was so frightening. And um, they, they, you know, they, they gave me something to lower my blood pressure and you know, my pulse rate was still pretty high, but they kept me there for a few hours and then let me go. Um, the thing is, you know, I, I don't, because I had a lot of caffeine that day, it could have been written off as that, you know, because... And, you know, I, I could tell that it was kind of, they might have wanted to claim it was an anxiety too, just because of the questions they ask, well, are you nervous? Are you anxious? You know, um, and two, you know, I, I got nervous. I was taking my blood pressure. It was going up and I got more nervous and I took it again. It went up and I got more nervous. So there, there I mean, there could be some anxiety level there as well, but the real physical, it doesn't change the fact that there are real physical problems, There's something wrong. And yes, when, when something is really physically wrong, especially when it's with your heart, you're going to be afraid. Of course, there's going to be anxiety. The question is, which came first, right? The last thing I want is for them to, rush, to brush it all off on anxiety, because once that's written down in my charts, that's it. If there's something really wrong, it's not going to be looked at seriously, okay? That's terrifying. Anyway, so I went to my doctor, and um, we, low, we ended up lowering my blood pressure medication because the diet was working in that, in, to that extent, um, my blood pressure has gone down, which is great. I, I love that. And that it's it, regularly, it's been going down. So I don't know if maybe um, it's just too low now. And I, you know, I have the at-home monitor. It's not necessarily that accurate. But, um, and I know that because I've taken my blood pressure at home before I went to the doctor. And it was very different here than there. So sometimes it, not so much. It's just, you know, there's slight variation. But so I can't tell if it's 100% accurate or not. But anyway... So recently, um, this again, this is an ongoing thing, but it seems to be getting worse. Recently, like recently, I've been having these these bouts again, where I'll get up and I'll be really dizzy, um, almost to the point of blacking out. Right, everything is tingling, my my hands, my, you know, just my entire body. I don't know if it's an electrolyte imbalance or not. Um, when I called my doctor about this issue, and this was before I started keto as well, I called my doctor about the issue, and I, I actually spoke to a nurse, and one of the nurses said it sounds like an electrolyte imbalance. But um, I, I never actually got to speak with the doctor, and I guess they they decided to keep me on the, the medication I'm on, and they scheduled me for like um, it, uh, an appointment in mid January. So hopefully I'll last that long, crossing my fingers and my toes and everything. Um, so anyway, today it, it too like I haven't been able to exercise much because what's happening is you know just a little exertion in my heart rate just races up. To, to an unhealthy extreme, and then I'll get those pauses between the heartbeats too. Okay, so today what happened was, um, you know, I had to go out, 
And I noticed just from a little bit of walking, I'm sorry, not just today, this happened a few days ago too, just from a little bit of walking, my heart was racing so fast and my lungs felt like they were burning. It felt like I had been running a marathon. It, my lungs were burning. My chest was burning. You know, um, my throat hurt. Like it's as if you were running, like run, you know, as hard as you can for, for as long as you can and then stop that, that sensation. And I was, I, I was barely moving. Okay. I, I slowed myself down to, to, uh, you know, <laughs> an elderly person's pace. I was piddling around. Okay. It, it was frightening. And that happened again today. Um, I, you know, I, um, I was barely moving. My heart starts beating very fast. You know, uh, my, my lungs start burning as if I'm in a massive workout and I'm not, um, it's, 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 it's frightening. And occasionally there was like, um, fluttering of my heart. I don't know. Um, so I came home and I took a shower and, you know, I'm trying to calm down, you know, because that's, you know, I calm down, you slow your heart rate. Um, but it just, at some point, it started beating so fast. I'm not even, I don't even know how it's possible for a heart to beat that fast. So fast and so strong. I was not moving. I was literally just standing in the shower. So um, th this is frightening. And I know that, I you know, I know that with me, especially since I told my doctor what's going on with the stalking. I don't know if she believes me or not. She might, but it's more likely that they'll diagnose me with anxiety instead of a real problem, even though these symptoms are, you know, they go along with us, a real problem. So I, you know, my, my appointment is in the middle of January. I was thinking about whether or not to go to the hospital today. I decided not to because, because of everything that's going on. The last thing I need is to be diagnosed with, you know, you know, anxiety, paranoia, you know, panic attacks, because that's it, right? You, you, and then have them send that to the government too. So when I go to the, you know, if I go to the cops or the FBI or something to report, you know, attacks and abuse, it won't be taken seriously. It'll, or should I say it'll be taken even less seriously than it is now. So I think I'm not going to go to the hospital. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, we'll see what happens. I just wanted to, 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 to put my, my uh, little story out there. Um, I want people to know what's going on. I know that there are the trolls are going to see this before any legitimate human being. Um, but I hope at some point a real human being sees this and takes it seriously. And uh, what can I say? Even you got to help us. I mean, even if if not for me, I know a lot of targets are they're pretty much on their last leg. But this nightmare is not going to stop. It's not going to stop with the death of the current targets. Okay, if you guys don't take this seriously, all right, and I mean the red flag laws, the you know all of it, the the the, the ability you know for for anyone to to deem someone mentally ill at any over anything, and then have that taken seriously for for doctors' reports to be reported to the government, you got to take this seriously. We're losing every bit of freedom we've had. This is the 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 you know communist Germany all over again. This is the Stasi. This is our Zetsung here in America. Please take it seriously, no matter what happens to me. All right. To those of you who are being targeted, I don't know you all, but you know what? <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm really not. There's something about us, and I know you guys are strong. You wouldn't be targeted if you weren't. They want they want something from us. They want to silence us for some reason. They're experimenting on us for some reason. <laughs> okay, I'm crying. Um, I, I hope you guys see this. And for the perpetrators, you're helping to kill people. Understand, you're following people around. You're tracking them. You're falsely flagging them. As paranoid, you understand what that's doing to them. To those of you who have taken jobs that require tracking someone, that require making certain comments to them or certain gestures or, 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 or putting on some kind of theater, okay? Someone hired you to be actors and then to interfere in someone else's life when that person isn't willing, you don't know that person, or maybe you do, but you, you haven't told him about it or her. You... you Stop. You're involved in this. You need to understand what you're doing. To those of you 
who were told to do these things and then to report the targets, to flag them. You know, as soon as they, they say anything, you know, they, they say the wrong thing, they, they look upset, they look agitated. You need to stop. Not only are you destroying us, you're destroying your own freedom. The society you're setting up right now for all of us is the society you, your children, your grandchildren will have to live in. The hell is wrong with you. Anyway, I got to go. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I'm going to go to the hospital or not, I'm probably not. If you don't like me, it doesn't matter. It's not about me. It's about all of us. Okay? Letting something happen, to, something bad happen to someone you don't like, you let it happen to everyone then because that's the standard you set for society. And I would not allow this. I would not approve of this for my worst enemy because I know that whatever is allowed to happen to one person will eventually happen to others. And then more and more and more until it becomes the norm. You can hate me, my views, my, my politics, though I don't speak about politics very often here. Maybe I will. I don't know. But it's not about me. It's not about any individual person. It's about society as a whole. You shape the society you want. And don't do to others what you would not want done unto you. That was the sole message of Jesus. That's the golden word. And since Jesus was the word made flesh, that is his word. It's the golden rule. It's that simple. Put the phone down. Stop flagging people. And to, to, to the medical staff, to police officers, don't be so damn quick to flag someone as paranoid. You could be literally setting the stage for continued attacks on them when they're not, because they're not going to be taken seriously ever again. Think about what you're doing. Peace.